Hi, folks. I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Oh, Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Because we have the most famous physical therapist on the internet. Well, in our opinion, of course, Bob, and you know what that's worth. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Three critical exercises, Brad, for pronated flat feet, especially if it's causing uh, you know foot and leg pain. We want to you know we want to try to correct this if we can. Right. Yeah. People wonder: is there some exercises we can do to help my flat feet? Or Sometimes people are wondering, do I even have flat feet? Or why does flat feet cause pain in my knees or my right. back? These are all good questions, And Brad. we're going to answer them all. And also, if you are new to our channel, mm -hmm. by the way, please take a second to subscribe yep. to us. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Also, if you haven't already, go over to Facebook and like us because Brad and I, as children, were not liked. Not like our beloved Vikings, they're, lo they're loved, not your Vikings. I was thinking you weren't liked because you were a Viking fan, but only in <laughs> That's Wisconsin. That's a possibility. Right. Maybe at let's that get time. on with the program. All right, let's Bob. go. Okay. Flat feet. Flat feet. So flat feet, what are we talking about, flat feet? So typically, what we say normal is, I don't know, can we see this with a black yeah, sock Yeah, I bet on? you we can, maybe. Yeah. Right here are my fingers. That's your normal arch. I've got a, a medium arch, it would be considered. Bob has a high arch. I have a high arch, yeah. So with him, you can do this with fingers, actually. If you can, well, it depends if you got one of those big brawly kind of guys. Uh, but if you got normal sized fingers, you're going to be able to get two, almost three fingers in the arch here. And a, a normal arch would be more like two. And if you can, I'm going to try and pronate or get my foot flat, but which I can't do very well. But if, if this is flat, touching the floor or very close to it, that would be considered flat-footed. And it's going to be with weight-bearing. Right. Because now, like, so a lot of people, they'll, they'll be like this, and, and there's no weight on it. They still have the arch. Right. But as soon as they put some weight on the, the leg, and it, like you said, yours pronates a little bit and flattens a little bit. Sure. But, but not much. You have a good, healthy arch there yet, Brad. Well, yeah, thank you, Bob. I've been working on my arch. <laughs> and it's, you know, there's a lot of uh, theory behind that, but we, we'll get into that a little bit later. So uh, if you do think you have you, after seeing this, you think, well, maybe I do have some, some flat foot. What, uh, what can I do? Or, well, one of the first things you want to show, Brad, is how the whole chain can affect the flat foot. Precisely, Bob. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not just the foot itself. The hip and the knee can have a great effect on flat feet, or causing flat feet. Or vice versa, right. the flat feet can, can cause, cause problems the, up the chain. Uh, right. It's the old song, the hip bone's connected to the, the knee bone. There you the go. And they're all, the it's bone. all the chain. Yep. Uh, so let's look at this. If I, I'm going to exaggerate a little bit what happens. If I have my foot there and then I go into a pronated or flat foot position, we're going to watch what happens to my knees. See how they come in? So and they, they kind of become um, knock need. Right, yeah. yep. So the, so the other thing we're going to look at here is, you know, I wanted to show this, Bob. A lot of times also, I don't know what, where he's headed with this, but it, sometimes it also internally rotates, right? Yeah, there you go. Right, that so that, that's there. exactly what I wanted to do oh. right there. I should have did that before, but I didn't think of it. So when I go flat, look at yeah, the arrow look, points the direction, the tibia. Yeah, look at that tibia. It starts turning in, and the knees are knocking, but that's, that's turning in, which causes the, this, well, you know, this, this can cause that, or this can cause that. Right. Either well, way. One way or another, it's going to put yeah. stresses on the knee. And then the, the femur is actually going to internally rotate, yeah. which can stress the hip. And when that internally rotates, it can anterior pelvically <laughs> put an anterior pelvic, pelvic tilt on the, on the pelvis, yeah. which can stress the low back. So it's, yeah. what are we going to do, Bob? Yeah, you want to correct this yeah. if you, as best as you can to some extent. Yeah. Don't, um, you know, if you have this, don't feel like all this is going to happen to you. You're going to fall apart because, right. you know. But it, we're going to show you some things, especially, uh, I, I think, with a lot of women who tend to, to end up being like this because of the wider hips. Sure. And, 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 uh, but we're going to show you that you need to strengthen your hips, too. Sure. So Right. Okay, so now we understand that, we want to learn how to strengthen that so we can get things in line. Can you zoom down there, Brad, Ronnie? did you want to talk about shoes first or not? Well, okay, let's do that. Now, yeah. that's a good point. Some people are going yeah. to think, why can't I just get some arch supports or some special shoes? Motion control shoes often help support it so that doesn't happen. And the argument is when you do that, the muscles that normally help support that arch get weaker because they don't have to work. 
they're being supported right. by the arch support, and then when you take your shoes off, they're really weak and they flatten more. Um, so, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that you shouldn't wear them, right? Uh, but uh, you have to understand that if you have some problems going up in the hip and knee causing that arch to collapse, mm -hmm. even with the arch support, you're probably still going to have some of those issues, and we right. probably should correct those. Right, yeah. So, so you don't want to mask the problem by right. by getting a pair of arch supports and, and think you're and fixed. thinking you're fixed because right. you're still probably you're still maybe wearing your shoe off on the inside and mm -hmm. and so right do you want to show the motion control shoes or don't you have any? I, actually i don't have any here but this is what you're going to find out if uh, you go to a good store or shoe store and you say i want a pair of motion control shoes they'll know that there's for a flat-footed person and you're going to look at them and they're very distinct they're very uh, the sole is very prominent from the heel all the way up to about the forefoot and it's about twice as thick as this and if you take your finger and you pull down like this you will never be able to do this yeah, on a motion control shoe. It's very stiff. You'll get the tip to bend a little bit, but certainly not like this. One other point, Brad, you know, if you take an old pair of tennis shoes that you've been wearing a long time, generally, if you're flat footed, you're going to be wore out more on the inside yeah. here. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where your wear pattern is, and that's not normally where it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, you're going to maybe have a little bit on the outside edge here and, and right through here. Right. But on a flat foot, it's going to be on the inside. Right. So that there's your sign, too. little shoe analysis. Yeah. Bob, I want to get to the exercise. All right, let's start. Um, the, first, to... the first one is, can you go down to my, my feet, Lonnie? I'm going to show... You, you're there? She's there. Okay. She's there, okay. I'm going to go like this, and you need to do this barefoot or socks, okay? You're not going to do it with the shoes on. And I'm just simply going to, if we're flat foot, look like this, look right where the pointer is as I come up, and I'm going to roll it up, but I'm going to keep the outside of my feet on the floor, pull up as far as you can, and down, and up, and down. And what we're doing is we're working the muscles that helps supinate, which is the opposite of pronate, which is the opposite of flat foot. So we're working those muscles to get that arch stronger. And you do 10, 15 of these. The thing is, you can do this as part of your daily habit. Sure. I mean, you can be standing there and waiting around for something and if looking at, the at your bus phone. Stop. Yep, just go ahead and do some of those. And Although you can try it with shoes on, it's best to do it without. Right, but I, I can feel it with my shoes on right sure. now, Brad, that it works. I can still feel it and it's still working. Because if they're so. at the bus stop, Bob, and they take yeah. their shoes off to do these. People are going to talk. Yeah, people will talk, <laughs> Bob, and we don't want that. Okay, so the next one is if you take some resistive band like we have here. It works nice if you can hook it up to the wall conveniently. And now you have to do this properly, and can, you can still go down to my left foot. I'm going to use a balancing yeah, pole here. I was going to say, you don't want to have it so bad, the resistance so bad that you're getting pulled and you can't right. even hold yourself up. This is the yellow one. It's not a lot of resistance. Yeah. And you don't want to have your foot out so you're in balance here, so you're doing this, which is not a shoulder exercise. You want to have it like here so you're balancing on one foot. So I'm balancing there like this. Now, I want this to happen. I want my inside of my arch right here right here to, to come up yep to come up and that's going to happen when i take my hand i'm going to keep my elbow by my ribs i'm going to pull way out here and i'm going to lift the other leg up and pull way out here and if you look at my foot every time i pull out i arch so i can maintain balance now you can use a pole or a stick or anything over on this side to help balance if What's you're having nice problems with balance. What's nice about this exercise, uh, Brad, I'm sure you'll agree, is that it, it works on your balance. Right. It works on your ankle strength. Right. It works maybe a little bit even on your proprioception. But so, I mean, it, 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 there's a lot of benefits to, to do it besides just the arch. Right. The arch. Good point, Bob. So. Excellent point. And the last one. You're going to do on a stairs. Yep, on a stairway. Bob, can you? I'm going to hold it if you don't mind, Brad. No, it's going to be okay? fine on here. Oh, oh yeah. Don't Bob gets nervous like yeah, that. Yeah, well, I saw Brad almost take a digger before. Yeah, but that's kind of fun. Yeah. It makes life exciting. My wife gets excited too when she sees those videos. Yeah, I bet you she does. Okay, so we're gonna start. Bob, you want to point with that yeah. one? Yeah. No, no, the other end. Okay, they gotcha. Have to use the red part. Gotcha. There. So I'm gonna start in dorsiflexion, and I'm I'm gonna allow it my foot to actually go a little flat. Now I'm using this to balance. My left foot here is not doing anything, just to help balance as well. So most of my weight is on my right foot, and I'm going to push up. And right at the top here, 
I'm going to really go all the way in. He's turning, the, he's rotating this bone right here in. So it's going this way. All this the way, way up. And you're going to do these slow like I'm doing. Up. And, and that causes the arch to become larger. Yep. And, and so, the, yep, that, uh, you remember the muscle that's doing this, Bob? Uh, you're talking about an Posterior tibialis. Oh, okay, oh, gotcha. Yeah. That, I thought you were talking about the intrinsics of the Oh, point. no, no, I, not no. the intrinsics, but yeah, it's, a good, it's another good point there. They're doing a lot of work as well. But the posterior tibialis is really a, a bigger muscle that really pulls on that navicular bone, which does this right in here. That which, by the way, I mean, that's another reason to try to get your arches <sighs> under control is because if the posterior tibialis is not strong and it's stretched out, it can give you shin splints. Yep. So, th you know, this is another reason why you might want to be doing these um, to prevent shin splints. Right. You know. a, yep. So, this so. Is, these are exercises for balance, shin splints, all kinds of, and my feet are getting tired. That's why I had to stop all right. and give it a little Well, massage. that means it's working. <laughs> it is. So. So All very right. good. Any any other further questions about flat feet? I don't know what else they could have, Bob. No, we covered it all. So thanks for watching.